If you're dealing with SIBO and you're thinking about using some probiotics and want to know if you should use prebiotics while dealing with SIBO, in this video, we're going to help you figure out if this is a good idea or is it the worst idea ever. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So over on our video for how to fix SIBO fast, Rose asked, is it okay to have prebiotics with SIBO? And this is a great question and one that we hear a lot and there's a lot of arguments and dis disapprovals and approvals out there in the world. But basically when we're looking at prebiotics, this is like specialized plant fibers that don't really get broken down in the stomach or higher up in that digestive process. And they can become food for our beneficial bacteria. So there's a lot of benefits to bringing in these prebiotics for our beneficial bacteria. But the problem is they can also feed the bad guys. So SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is when there's an overgrowth of bad bacteria in the small intestine where they really should not be. Most of our beneficial bacteria should not be in the stomach and they shouldn't be very much in the small intestine. It should mostly be in our large intestine. That's where we really want the good bacteria to be. So when the bad guys have set up camp in the small intestine, we want to try to wipe those out so that the digestive process can work correctly and so that you're not getting all the symptoms that a lot of bacteria in the small intestine can create. It's not so fun, but it can also restrict your ability to really get all the nutrients out of your food when there's all these bad guys in there. There's a lot of people that feel like it can restrict the body from creating or utilizing enzymes that help us break down carbohydrates and such. And that can also be why you hear a lot of people say, ah, if you have SIBO, you really want to stay away from carbs and sugars and artificial sweeteners because they can all feed these bad bacteria and help them thrive and really set up camp and have a keg party and raise all their kids. So the short answer when you're looking at should I use probiotics while I'm dealing with SIBO is sort of no because you don't want to feed those bad bacteria. And yet you're going to see studies out there that show that, well, it really seems that it works better if you're just using probiotics and not prebiotics. And you'll see other studies that say, well, it seems that, that it works fine with the prebiotics and the probiotics, and people don't really see a whole lot of trouble. But the reality is when you're looking at your own human is that some people are going to experience magnified symptoms and become a little bit more miserable and make their situation situation worse when they're eating carbohydrates, sugars, sweeteners, or using prebiotics with their probiotics. The problem with this is that a lot of people don't really qualify to just drop all the sugars and all the carbs because they're having digestive malfunctions that don't allow them to get fuel from other sources. So they can't really break down proteins correctly or emulsify fats and use those fats as fuel for the body. So when you take all the carbs away, you're basically taking away their only fuel source and then they're going to be depressed and have insane cravings and be a miserable human being and yell at the mailman because they don't like the shorts that he's wearing. So we really want to look at the individual and you're going to have to maybe test some things out to see does it work okay to use prebiotics while you're dealing with some of these SIBO issues. And the reality is that most people with SIBO are dealing with these digestive malfunctions because that's how the SIBO came about in the first place. We need proper stomach acid to be able to break our food down correctly and, and get the nutrients out of that food. But that stomach acid is also the barrier that fries all these varmints that come in on the food that we're eating. They should die in an acid bath. But it's really common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid for a wide variety of reasons. And when that's the case, these bad guys come in, they set up camp, and then they create all this trouble. So what we like to see people do is take steps to correct those digestive malfunctions. If someone is not making enough stomach acid, they need to correct that. If someone's bile has become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, the bile is what comes out of the gallbladder and helps us neutralize the acids once they leave the stomach. If that's not flowing correctly, that needs to be corrected. And when those things are corrected, now the front door is not open. So you're not going to take these steps to wipe out all these bad guys. And then the next day, you're just going to let more bad guys in the front door because the front door is open. So we like to see people correct those malfunctions. And then we like to see people take steps 
to wipe out those bad bacteria, bring them down a few notches so that when you do put probiotics in there, it's not going to create a lot of symptoms that can come from putting in all these good guys, the probiotics, that start to battle with all the bad guys. You're like creating this war in your small intestine or in your stomach or somewhere in your digestive tract that can really magnify a lot of the symptoms that you're creating. But if someone can take those layers of bacteria down a few notches by using some natural antimicrobial kind of things that can help wipe them out a little bit, then you bring that down so that when you do put the probiotics in there, it's probably okay for you to use some prebiotics too, and it's not going to magnify your symptoms so greatly. If you put some prebiotics in and you really magnify your symptoms, you know you're really not set up for that. You know that you're going to be pretty miserable if you try to go that route. Some people can go that route and they'll have success and they'll fix the whole situation because they're putting enough good bacteria in there that can kind of take over and police the situation and keep all those bad guys under check. So we like to see people get the terrain set up and then use the probiotics with some type of prebiotic in it. And there's a lot of varieties out there. We'll put a link in the description of the video below to the one that we use just because I know that you're going to ask. I'm not saying that you should use this probiotic. I'm not saying that using this probiotic fixes SIBO. I'm not trying to suggest anything like that. I'm just going to link the one that we use with a lot of our clients so that you can see what we're talking about. But it seems to be okay to use some probiotics with some prebiotics if a person has taken the steps to correct any digestive malfunctions that might be going on and then take some other steps to kind of knock those bacteria layers down a little bit to set it up so where you're not going to magnify all the symptoms when you start to use the probiotics and or with the prebiotics. And then you probably want to use those probiotics for about three months. That seems to be what a lot of the studies are showing seems to be a good round number that helps improve a lot of situations. I don't feel like people need to use them indefinitely, like a lot of people would say. I feel like if the terrain is right, once you get them in there and you get them set up, they're going to thrive and they'll continue to replicate and keep the situation in a good place. And you might only want to use them occasionally. So if you want to understand how to correct those digestive malfunctions and to bring those layers of bacteria down a little bit so that you're set up to start using some probiotics with prebiotics, then jump over right now and check out that video that we were talking about on steps to fix SIBO fast. I can't wait to hear about your results.